Did you know this miracle in American history? In the name of the great Jehovah and the Continental Congress, shouted Ethan Allen, May 10th, 1775, when asked by the surprised British commander of Fort Ticonderoga, in whose name his surrender was being demanded. Seven months later, December 1st, 1775, 43-year-old General George Washington sent 25-year-old Colonel Henry Knox to bring Fort Ticonderoga's cannons to Boston. The British had occupied Boston since the Battle of Bunker Hill, blockading the harbor and starving the inhabitants into submission. Henry Knox, who had witnessed the Boston massacre and the destruction of his bookseller's shop, fled the city with his young wife, Lucy. Knox embarked on his task to move 59 cannons over 300 miles in three months from Fort Ticonderoga to Boston, an accomplishment so extraordinary that historian Victor Brooks called it one of the most stupendous feats of logistics. Knox put the cannons on big flat bottom boats and then rode them in freezing weather to the southern end of Lake George, then dragged them on sleds across the snow. Knox arrived at Cambridge, Massachusetts on the night of March 4th. With a diversionary attack made to distract the British, Washington's men wrapped wagon wheels with straw to muffle the noise and frantically moved the cannons up to a strategic point on Dorchester Heights, overlooking Boston's Harbor. To make it appear even more impressive, they painted some logs to look like cannons. The next morning, March 5, 1776, an astonished British General William Howe looked up at Dorchester Heights and remarked, these rebels did more in one night than my whole army would have done in one month. On March 6th of 1776, from his Cambridge headquarters, General Washington ordered Thursday the 7th being set apart by this province as a day of fasting, prayer, and humiliation to implore the Lord and giver of all victory to pardon our manifold sins and wickedness, and that it would please him to bless the Continental Army with his divine favor and protection. All officers and soldiers are strictly enjoined to pay all due reverence and for those blessings which our holiness and uprightness of life alone encourages us to hope through his mercy to obtain. On March 7, 1776, General William Howe of the British, he planned to attack the Americans by landing 3,000 troops and charging up Dorchester Heights. But a violent snowstorm causing the sea to be so turbulent, the attack had to be abandoned. General Washington wrote his brother, John Augustine Washington, March 31st of 1776. Upon their discovery of the works the next morning, great preparations were made for attacking them, but not being ready before the afternoon and the weather getting very tempestuous, much blood was saved and a very important blow prevented that this most remarkable interposition of providence is for some wise purpose, I have not a doubt. On March 8th of 1776, General Howe sent the word to Washington that if the British were allowed to leave Boston unmolested, they would not set the city on fire on their way out. Eight days passed, and on March 16th, the Continental Congress approves, approved a resolution by General William Livingston. Congress do earnestly recommend a day of humiliation, fasting, and prayer that we may confess and bewail our manifold sins and by sincere repentance and amendment of life appease God's righteous displeasure and through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ obtain his pardon and forgiveness. On March 17th of 1776, British General Howe's troops boarded their ships and evacuated Boston. Amazing instance of a crisis, a day of prayer, a storm coming, and the British leaving. America is unique in world history, and it's important for us to remember these miracles in American history.